Welcome to the weekly update. This is being prepared Sunday, July 17th, where I'll go over the action in the market of the previous week and then see how things look for the week of July 18th through the 22nd. And I apologize, I'm posting this a little bit later than usual. I needed to get away from this stuff for a little while, so I'm a little bit later than usual with posting this. Well, let's go back and talk about the week session. It was a pretty volatile week. We had some up days, some down days, and we ended up being down on the week overall. There's a lot of concerns about the CPI and inflation. And that report came out on Wednesday. There's also some real concerns about global growth, especially in Europe and specifically in Italy. They've been having some problems with the prime minister there who resigned and then they said, no, you can't resign. And then it's just kind of a mess where there's high inflation in the European Union. And if they wanna raise interest rates, well, can they do that with the problems they're seeing in Italy? That's kind of a rundown of what's happening there. The US dollar index, it's pretty much doing better than anything else right now. Now, there will probably come a day when the dollar index goes in the toilet, but it's not right now. And when you compare it to the other two major currencies of the world, the Japanese yen and the euro, the dollar is holding up really well right now. We did have the CPI come out in the previous week. It showed a 1.3% month over month increase. And that translates into a year over year growth rate of 9.1%. That's higher than we've seen in decades. And so that has a lot of people really concerned. The food index was up 9.1% on a year over year basis. And that's probably something that you're feeling every time you go and buy some food. It's just not a real friendly environment right now. There's a lot of inflation with prices really going up. The energy index, part of the CPI, it was up 41.6%. My goodness, on a year-over-year -year basis. And you're probably feeling this at the pump every time you go to put gas in your car. Then on Thursday, we had the PPI report. It was up 1.1% on a month-over-month -month basis. And that translates into an 11.3% rise. And those figures that inflation will eventually bleed over into what we have to pay for things when we buy things. Then we also had some bank earnings that came out, specifically JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley. They were disappointing. So the markets didn't really like that. We're starting to come into earnings season now where that can have more of an influence on not only the stocks, the industry group and the sector, but sometimes it can bleed over into the entire index. We also received on Friday the consumer sentiment preliminary reading, and it improved a little bit, but it's still very, very low. And I'll have a chart to show you that. So we ended up being down 0.9%. It was a down week overall. Volume was below average, which we're seeing that pretty much every day now. The technicals are negative when we're looking at the weekly charts where well, there's glimmers of hope and there's some possible positive scenarios that we're looking at on the daily charts. But on the weekly basis, which is what a lot of you use to gauge when to do things in the markets, we're still pretty negative overall. The big concern right now is inflation and interest rates, as well as geopolitical concerns. There's some supply chain issues that could be happening. Oil is bouncing all over the place. Fed speak, they're still pretty hawkish, meaning that they are willing to raise interest rates right now to try to get inflation under control. And then they'll worry about how's the economy doing further down the road. Earnings, as I said, they're starting to come out and there's real recession fears. And that's the debate going back and forth. Until we get the final version of the GDP, this is going to be a debate. The condition of our trend is it's strengthening. It's getting stronger on the ADX chart and it's negative overall. So here, going back and looking at the week, here's Monday, we gapped lower and had a down day. Then Tuesday, we also 
were going pretty much sideways and then trailed off. Wednesday, we tried to rebound a little bit, but it really didn't do all that much. Thursday, we gapped massively lower, but spent the day bouncing back up. And then we saw a lot of the damage repaired on Friday, which is where we gapped higher and then did the old smokestack look for the rest of the day and ended up closing at the high. So really, the, the week ended on a positive note. Can that carry through? The Dow is down 0.2%. It's holding up the best. The NASDAQ is kind of, it's the growth area. And it's what we're really looking for if this sector rotation from value back into growth is taking place. And so we want to keep an eye on that. But it was down 1.6%. The NASDAQ down, or excuse me, the S&P down one point. Okay, let's try that again. The S&P down 0.9%. And then the small caps, which are really not helping us all that much right now, they were down 1.4%. Here is the look back on how things performed. You had the NASDAQ 100 do the best and the NYSE way over on the right. It was actually down. And now this just goes back to five trading days. I don't go from Friday to Friday. I go from Monday through Friday on these charts. This goes back to the all-time high in the S&P. It just shows how the Dow and the S&P is in pink. And then way over on the right, you have the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ and how they performed since that all-time high. Looking at our sectors for the week, the energy sector was down the most. And some people are thinking, are we rotating out of that sector? Communication materials, they were also negative in industrials as well. The only sector that was really up were staples, and they were just barely up on the week. So it was pretty negative across the board. This just goes back and look all, at all the sectors where you had discretionary doing the best, followed by tech and communication and staples. They were up. All of the rest of the sectors were down, led by energy going down the most. Here's our current Market valuation, we're still fairly valued. Here is their overall chart showing how we've come down below this yellow dashed line and we're getting closer to this historical norm right here. So we're fairly valued when you take all of their different components together. Here's the one that I tend to look at the most. Here's the S&P 500 PE ratio. This dashed line is the historical average. And we're still 42% above that historical average. So we're still slightly overvalued when it comes to that. If we drop down below this yellow line, that's one standard deviation away from this dash line. And then we would become fairly valued. Here's the S&P 500 inflation adjusted. It just shows this is the upward moving historic trend line of the S&P and that we are still quite a bit above this trend line here. Looking at sentiment, we went into extreme fear territory, but kind of has moved out of that slightly over the past week. And here is just showing how we spent a lot of time under 25 while we're coming back up out of that. The advance that we saw on Friday helped to take us up out of the extreme fear category. Looking at the spread between the risky loans and the not so risky loans, it's still declining ever so slightly. When it really spikes up, that is typically when there are problems with the economy. And then looking at our national con financial conditions index, we are moving up, but we're still underneath this black line. So we want to keep an eye on this, but at the same time, we're not in real bad a real bad situation yet. This chart is just showing how likely are we to go into a recession based on the yield curves. Typically when it goes above 50, that's when we look at entering into a recession. Well, we're not quite up to that point yet based on the yield curves, even though we have a couple of them that are inverted. This is showing the outflows of in the financial sector, the banks and so forth. It's improving, but it's still negative overall. Then this is, anytime you see these, this red line, these red lines here, if they're above zero, 
that's considered to be healthy. That means we have good liquidity. There's a lot of people getting in. There's a lot of money going into the markets. When we drop below this zero line, that's what we call a liquidity crisis. And we are really starting to drop down. And if you pause this and look at this, it'll just show different events that have happened through the course of time. We're kind of blaming this on Ukraine right now, but there's a lot of things that were set in motion, in my opinion, well before the Ukraine situation really blew up. This is just showing how all of the central banks in the world are really raising interest rates. When this is lower, that means they're not raising rates as much. Well, when it spikes up like this, these are the global central banks together really raising interest rates. This just shows the economic data flow here and how are we looking at going in a recession. If this black line are all of the different economic indicators, and yes, they're going up. So that, and as we go up, that's the percent of probability that we will go into a recession. We can look at the gray line here. This is the three month and the 10 month yield curve. That's really going up too. So yeah, it's looking like we could head into a recession, but we're not necessarily as high with some of these readings as we've been in the past. And then we have the kind of light blue line here. This is the S&P and the high grade spreads. This is also showing that there's a bit of an increase in going into a recession. And that's the big debate that's going back and forth right now. This is showing the Fed funds rate projections where the dark blue line over here, this is what we've already seen. And this lighter blue line, this is what the Bank of America, that's their projection. They previously had it a lot higher with this yellow line. And then this is what the market is thinking. This, that's the green line coming down here. Again, and this can change all the time with things. This is just showing on Friday that we had retail sales. And they're, even though they're turning down a little bit, we had a good reading on Friday. And that really helped boost things for the Friday session. So we're not rolling over as much yet as what we've been seeing in the past. We also had the AA, NAA, I can never remember that acronym. This is the active asset managers, and they're still pretty fearful overall. They were more fearful. They bounced back up a little bit, but now they're showing some more fear. And you can pretty much gauge this with if the market's up, this figure is going to go up. If the market's down, this figure is going to go down. This is the sentiment reading where we bounced a little bit up. We were at 50 and we bounced up to 51. Still very, very negative. But here's the spread between the two-year yield, the red line and the blue line, how people are feeling. And it's still very, very high. The latest reading that I had from the right X bear bull ratio shows that people are getting more into the bearish funds. They're not as bullish as they had been, but we're not necessarily at a spike right now either. And here's the American Association of Individual Investors where they had been extremely pessimistic about the markets. Well, we're seeing a little bit of an improvement, but they're still very pessimistic. The VIX actually declined a little bit on the line chart and on the bar chart. The ulcer index, and this is what I've been saying in the daily videos, this is more indicative of what we're seeing where, yeah, we're coming back down a little bit, but we're giving a lot higher reading. This tries to measure fear. And where the daily chart is way down below the moving average, it's not really showing what other indicators are telling us. Copper is another thing that we're looking at because it's really dropping down. And when we see copper going up or down, that can sometimes give us a heads up of what's going to happen with the economy. Now, our daily scenarios where we spiked up with the VIX and are coming back down, yeah, that's kind of still hanging in there okay, but we're just not seeing it in really heavy duty price movement yet. This is still holding up. This is our sector rotation. At the end of 2021, we can see here where the S&P was making higher highs and also higher lows here. 
And we saw a real shift going from the growth area back over into value. Well, now we're starting to see it go the opposite way. We're, we're making a lower low with the S&P, but we're making higher lows on the value to growth ratios. And this Q, the Qs are growth. And this is still holding up okay. Now, these are daily charts. We're discretionary. This also holding up. And the ratio between growth and value is also holding up. And this is typically happening on down days. We're seeing this improve. Now, it may not continue that way, but just over the last week, that's what I saw was happening. The big day that we had up on Friday, this actually went more sideways overall. So this is kind of a stealthy move that the smart money may be doing to rotate back into growth. Here's another chart showing the ratio between the large, mid, and small caps and the value or the ratio between growth and value. And it's also holding up. And they were kind of flat on Friday, even though we had an up day. It's been on the down days when we've seen this improve. And that, that could be positive underneath the surface. Looking at our earnings, the Schiller PE ratio is still very high at 28.98, where the mean and the median is about 16 to 17. Then I went to FactSet. I have a chart on the next slide. This is just an earnings update. And it just says the start of the second quarter, it's been weaker than normal with their earnings. And the positive earnings and revenue surprises have been smaller than average. And so there's not a real improvement as far as earnings and revenue growth rates. So we need to be aware of that because that's ultimately what feeds through into the justification for stock prices either going higher or lower. And right in the middle, this is the S&P 500 where the red line, these are below the estimates, the yellow line is <clears throat> in line with estimates and the green is above estimates. And this has been coming down slightly. And you can see how it's also related to other sectors with some of the other sectors not really giving us anything to report on at least yet. Here's the current earnings estimate put out by Morgan Stanley based on the consensus and their as usual, lower than the consensus. Another thing that we're seeing is here's the St. Louis real GDP now cast where it's coming in positive. The next one is the GDP now put out by the Atlanta Fed and it's coming in negative. Fed watch, this is kind of interesting too. This is a week ago. This is the same chart that I did in the last weekly video. And it showed that we had 92.4% chance that we're going to be basically raising interest rates three quarters of a percent or 75 basis points. And the market was pretty comfortable with that. And it looked like that's really what was going to happen. Well, with the economic reports that came out, this is where it's at now. And so it's really coming down in the probability of three quarters of a percent. And some of them are even going up to 1% increase. And then looking out into the July meeting, uh, this is where we had been at the 66.5 that we should probably top out at about 3%. Well, there's more people going into the camp now that we might be at three to three and a quarter percent at that meeting. And there's even a few starting to say we could be at three and a quarter to three and a half. So there's a lot of confusion right now is how much are interest rates going to be raised. You've had a couple of false starts now with the markets thinking that maybe we've topped out with inflation and it's coming down. Well, with the CPI and the PPI coming out this week, that blew that off the table. Well, we had that happen a couple of weeks ago too. And so the market is having some false starts with their inflationary outlook on things. And that can really mess things up. Here is the latest version that I have of the Fed balance sheet, just shows it rolling over ever so slightly. All right, let's go in and look at our charts where breadth, we saw a good move in breadth overall. We saw an advance based on price and volume. A lot of that came on Friday. Here is the weekly chart of the advanced decline ratio. It is looking more positive. 
New highs, new lows, they're still looking more negative to flat currently. And the accumulation distribution is right about on the moving average. So we're seeing some potential improvement under the surface. We're just not seeing it in price. And the price charts are going to be death cross downward downtrend, as I've been saying, it seems like forever now. Here's our trend showing the ADX is just continuing to get stronger with the red line on top. So that means we're in a negative trend. The Arun is showing some improvement. We're seeing a bit of an increase in buying and a bit of a decrease in selling. So that's helping the oscillator, but we're still below zero overall. The mass index, we might be getting close to a signal here. And it, this, when it's generated, it doesn't tell us the direction. It just says something might happen. And the first part of this indication is when we go above 27. Then when we drop below 25 or 26.5, that is when the second part of the signal is generated. And then that is picking up that something big should move in the market. We're not seeing that on the daily charts, but we are seeing it here on the weekly chart. The decision point scorecard, it changed a little bit. They had the short term and positive. Will it switch back to negative? Our pivots show that we're below S1 right now in the weekly pivots. <clears throat> and we've got quite a bit to do to improve on that. And down at the bottom, you can see how we're below average with the volume. We're well below the 50 period moving average, the long-term trend, death cross, downtrend. Bullish percent index declined a little bit, but we're coming off of having an extreme negative reading. The Chaikin oscillator, this is showing some improvement. And it's showing some improvement on the daily charts too, where we're turning up slightly. The Chaikin money flow is also showing some improvement, but it's still negative. The force index, also a little bit of improvement, but negative. The McClellan oscillator, it's still above zero, so that's positive, but it is declining. And the summation index based on price is going up. Actually, it should be going down. And based on volume is also going up slightly. It, actually, it should be going up because the McClellan oscillator is above zero. All of our oscillators are still looking pretty negative overall. The PMO is negative based on price and volume also continues to be negative. The PMO studies that we do, we're coming off an extreme positive reading with the rising PMOs down a little bit with those giving a buy signal. And we're kind of flat to those that are above zero. The RSI kind of floundering around below 50. So it's still negative overall. Special K is positive, but still rolling over. The Swinland Trading Oscillator, declining based on price and volume. Stoke RSI, showing some improvement. Williams Percent R, it's kind of floundering around a little bit closer negative. The Vortex, the red line's on top, so that's negative with the green line on the bottom. Ultimate Oscillator, came almost up to 50 and bounced back down, so that's more negative. Money Flow indicator is slightly positive, but we're still below 50. Bollinger Bands, also after giving an extreme negative reading, we're seeing a bit of a decline recently. The KST is still negative and the PPO rolling over a little bit, but still negative overall. The rate of change, because we had a down week, this was negative. And going back 50 weeks, we also declined slightly. The Copic curve, although we're almost losing a, cur a, a, a signal on the Copic curve on the daily chart, this isn't really turning up to give us anything right now. Here's our weekly chart showing that we've come down to the 38.2% retracement. We lost that earlier in the week, but then ended up getting back above that. Our different charts, the Heiken Ashi is still negative. The Kegi is still Whoops, the Keggy is still negative. It has, it's red. The Ranko continues to be negative. The ease of movement is pretty much flat. And the point and figure does not have a signal that's been generated, but we have three new circles drawn in here. So that's more negative 
overall. The three line break is also looking negative. Our different trading systems were neutral with the elder impulse system and the S&P, and we're still negative with the SAR system. Here is a look at the S&P, the mid caps and the small caps. And again, this doesn't have any studies or anything on it. This is just to provide a visual look. All stocks still in a downtrend overall and declined over the past week. Mid caps, death cross, downtrend. Small caps, death cross, downtrend. The Dow, death cross, downtrend. NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, NYSE, all of these, the same thing. Even the FANG stocks, even though they started to come up and play around with this moving average, but they were still down over 4% on the week. ARC is also playing with this moving average. It was down 5.87% on the week. The biggest software companies continue to be in a downtrend. Here's Dow Theory showing how we've been declining with the Dow, the transports. Utilities have been holding up a little bit better, but they're starting to see some weakness. The CRB index, we're seeing the shorter term average start to roll over. And this is the weekly chart where we've been seeing a real decline here. If this starts to fall underneath this moving average, we might end up seeing a death cross, but it's gonna take some, some quite a bit of time for that to work out. Gold has just been having a real difficult time. We're going through a death cross. We've been through death crosses on the daily charts. Now we're coming to a death cross on the weekly chart and it's just been having trouble which is very surprising because you would think in a high inflationary environment, gold should be going up. And then silver is also having a lot of trouble too. Also a recent death cross and going down. Oil bouncing all around, it's below 100 to 97.59. The dollar, it's the one thing that's been screaming up higher. Looking at bonds, we were up about a percent on the week, but there's still in a downtrend overall. This is looking at all the different yields. The green is the US, then we have the UK, Germany, and then Japan, which is still kind of floundering sideways. But overall, we saw a dec decline in interest rates this past week. Bonds, they're still trying to break out against stocks. We're seeing a golden cross here but we're not seeing a real move up yet with bonds. This is the monthly chart showing how we're breaking down a little bit. Stocks had been really outperforming, but now they're starting to underperform. Here's the intermarket analysis chart. Oil was up over 65% at one point. Now we're down in, I mean, only 33%. Still, that's a good gain, but it's half of where it was before. The dollar is what's been doing the next best after that. Gold is negative, stocks are negative, and bonds are negative. Here's the gold of the dollar. With gold going down and the dollar going up, this thing is just falling out of bed right now. Here's the gold of the S&P, where gold has really been underperforming, but it's still in an overall uptrend when compared to the S&P 500. The low volatility stocks, they're still holding up fairly well right now. Growth of value. This is what we're seeing more under the surface. Now, this is a weekly chart, so we're not going to pick up an awful lot yet, but we are seeing a bit of a bounce right here. Here's the NASDAQ 100. Again, growth compared to the S&P 500, not really picking up what we're seeing in the daily charts, at least yet, with the rotation. Here's the S&P 100. It is still outperforming the S&P 500, even though it's still in an overall downtrend. Discretionary, the things that you would like to have versus staples, the things that you have to have, it's still in a real downtrend, although we're seeing a little bit of a bounce in the ratio. Energy has really been falling back and tech has been seeing a little bit more strength overall, but this is still in an uptrend with energy in the lead. Our different scenarios, we came down and set an extreme reading with the percent of stocks in the S&P that are above their 200-day simple moving average. Now we're just waiting to see, can we get some bounce out of this? The same thing is true with those that 
are above their 50 period moving average in the S&P, came extreme negative, bounced. And here's the mid caps, seeing the same thing and the small caps. Can we see follow through with price? We're not really seeing it that big yet. Here's the staples ratio where we might've taken out these other extreme spikes. When we get a spike and come down, that often marks a bottom in the S&P. Well, we took out this spike and we could still be going a little bit higher from here. And then that means that these other spikes that we've been watching for quite a while, they would be negated at that point. So what's our outlook for the week coming up? Those reports coming out, we have housing starts and building permits. There's a lot of real estate things coming out this week. Wednesday, existing home sales. Thursday, we have jobless claims as usual. Friday, we have the IHS market manufacturing and services PMIs, not real big market movers in and of themselves. So really the focus is gonna be more on real estate. Then the technicals, which yeah, they're negative, although we're seeing some improvement. And then all of the different things that I talked about at the beginning, this list just keeps going on and on and on and it doesn't really seem to change. We're down right now in the weekly charts because of all the reasons that I just, you can just stop and look at this. And the technicals are negative on the daily charts, but we're showing a little bit of improvement, but we need to see some more follow through with price. We're not really in an uptrend now, especially on the weekly charts. And, but the daily charts are showing some improvement and there's a real disbelief that the market can even go up. Some of our scenarios are still hanging in there, but again, we're not seeing a lot of follow through with price yet. And the technicals are really not helping us on the daily charts. And they're still looking fairly negative on the weekly charts with just pockets of things that are improving. And we're not sideways because the ADX is well above 20 and is negative. So thank you. Have a wonderful week. Please feel free to check into some of the daily videos where I update these scenarios pretty much every time I do a video and see if that will be helpful to you. And I'll talk to you again after next week.